the Honorable Audley Shaw, Minister of Transport and Mining, the Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, Minister of State in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Ms. Jacqueline Ellis, CEO of the Spanish Town Hospital, Dr. Jacqueline Wright James, Senior Medical Officer of the Spanish Town Hospital, Mr. Gary McKenzie, Assistant Superintendent, Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, Councillor Renair Benjamin, representative of the mayor's office, staff and uh, officials here at the Spanish Town Hospital, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, all good morning. My name is Kadisha Watkiss, Senior Public Relations Officer inside the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and I'm happy to be chairing this uh, ceremony this morning, marking the installation of three hemodialysis machines here at the Spanish Town Hospital, an act of love that has been made possible by the partnership of the National Health Fund and the Transport Authority. We're going to get things underway shortly, and we should be brief, but I'm going to ask us just to stand at this time for the singing or playing of our national anthem. I'll ask us just to remain standing. We'll have Ms. Ruth Ann Crawford, Acting Director of Pharmacy Services in the National Health Fund, to open us with prayer. Ms. Crawford? Good morning, everyone. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love and continued mercies. We thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together as healthcare professionals to celebrate another milestone in improving healthcare services and providing continuous optimal pharmaceutical care for our renal patients. We pray that you will continue to provide for us as a nation as we seek to continuously improve our healthcare system. We pray you guide this morning's proceedings these and other mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. All right, so I'm sure we're all happy to be here. And I must say, I believe that CEO is especially delighted along with SMO Dr. Wright James because we are here again at the Spanish Town Hospital for a handover that of course represents uh, upgrading and the availability of much needed equipment as we commit to serving Jamaica and uh, of course desiring the best health outcome for all. 
And I must say that Spanish Town has been in the spotlight for quite some time, given the, the 70th anniversary celebrations. And we also know that Spanish Town will be receiving billions of dollars in upgrade as part of the health system strengthening program. And so as we, as we like to say in the ministry, good things are happening in public health, right? Great things are happening. And of course, partnership makes that possible. So we're going to get underway with uh, a number of remarks that uh, will open this portion of our program. I'm going to invite in this particular order Ms. Jacqueline Ellis, CEO of the Spanish Town Hospital, to give her welcome. And immediately following her will be Ms. Merdina Callum, Acting Corporate Communications Manager from the Transport Authority. She'll give us an overview of the project, and I'm sure we'll hear how these two entities, the National Health Fund and the Transport Authority, came together to... Uh, finance this beautiful hemodialysis machine, three of them, which are now ready to be used here at Spanish Town. So we'll take CEO followed by Ms. Callum in that order. Miss, Miss Kadisha. Watkiss, Master of Ceremony and Public Relations Officer, Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, OD, MP, State Minister, Ministry of Health and Wellness, Honorable Audley Shaw, CD, MP, Minister of Sports and Mining, Mr. Hensley Jones, Director of Pharmacy Services, National Health Fund, Mr. Willard Hilton, Managing Director, Transport Authority, Ms. Mr. Alan Blair, National Council of Taxi Association, Ms. Marinda McCallum, Acting Corporate Communications Manager, Transport Authority, Mr. Damian Dunbar, Audit Manager, Southeast Regional Health Authority, Dr. Jacqueline Wright James, Senior Medical Officer, Spanish Town Hospital, Ms. Novelet Robinson, Director of Nursing Service, Spanish Town Hospital, Mr. Keswick Simpson, Maintain and Supervisor, St. Catherine Health Department, special invited guests, members of staff, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I can testify this morning that the Lord has been good to the hemodialysis unit at this remarkable institution. As the CEO of the Spanish Town Hospital, it gives me joy to be offering welcome on behalf of the largest regional health authority to our distinguished guests. This is the second official handing over ceremony of its kind this, mor this morning. Sorry, this week at the Spanish Town Hospital, this noble Type B facility is celebrating 70 years of providing quality health care to the people of St. Catherine and surrounding parishes. Built in 1952, the facility provides secondary care to the parish's fastest growing population at this time, as well as patients from Kingston and St. Andrew and as far as Portland. With these additional machines, the hemodialysis unit, will be able to conduct more sessions, perform more emergency hemodialysis function. That will drastically reduce the number of patients on the waiting list and to receive life-saving treatment. Among some of the services that we offer here, we offer orthopedic, general surgery, general medicine, urology, pediatric, obstetric and gynecology, anesthetist, physiotherapy, radiology, and laboratory services. Today's ceremony is to express our appreciation for the opportunity to fulfill in part the strategic plan to improve the quality of healthcare services offered by this facility. We are indeed grateful that the Transport Authority and the National Health Fund are able to donate these three brand new machines that will enable the staff at the hospital to achieve its mission of ensuring that every patient receives adequate and effective replacement therapy through hemodialysis. The rewards of such partnerships are very beneficial to our patients 
as young as 13 years old and as old as 81 years that receive frequent treatment at the KTO hemodialysis unit at the Spanish Town Hospital. The National Health Fund has a long-standing beneficial relationship with the Southeast Regional Health Authority. With this partnership, the National Health Fund has provided tremendous support towards the improvement of patient delivery and the development of modern infrastructure across the health facilities island-wide. A heartfelt thank you to the Transport Authority and the National Health Fund both for being invaluable partners. Your generosity and confidence in our work means a lot to us and we look forward to future collaborative efforts as we work assiduously to transform lives of our patients. Ladies and gentlemen, let me reiterate another warm welcome to you all as we give thanks for today, much appreciated gifts that will continue to benefit not only the hospital, but the patients with critical renal disease. Thank you. Honorable Audrey Shaw, Minister of Transport and Mining, Honorable Juliet Holness, State Minister in the Minister of Health and Wellness, Cuthbert Flynn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Willard Hilton, Managing Director, Transport Authority. Mr. Ainsley Jones, representing the CEO from the National Health Fund. Um, ACP Gary Mc McKenzie, a Transport Authority Board member. Councillor Renier Benjamin, representing Mayor Scott from Spanish Town. Miss Jacqueline Ellis, the CEO of Spanish Town. And all our specially invited guests. Good morning. In 2018, when MP Robert Montague was appointed Minister of Transport and Mining, he brought with him a vision to transform the transportation sector by creating a business model that would see PPV operators seeing themselves as respectable business persons operating with order and discipline. Recognizing the importance of the sector, he also sought to ensure the welfare of the operators and their families that they were not neglected. So in 2019, he requested that the Transport Authority embark on a series of health fairs across the parishes, focusing on public passenger vehicle operators and their families. This initiative was undertaken through the corporate social responsibility of the Transport Authority in partnership with the National Health Fund. Health fairs were successfully held in Spanish Town, Savlamar, Montego Bay, and Ocho Rios. The program was, however, curtailed due to COVID-19. And in March, a week after the hosting in Ocho Rios, this we hope we will be able to resume in short order. Over to you, NHF. Prior to the start of the health fairs, in consideration of the sedentary lifestyle of the public transport operators who tend to, ignect, sorry, to neglect the state of their health while they serve the community in public, the minister requested that the authority assist with the purchase of some dialysis machines in order to increase access to the facility island-wide for members of the sector as well as the Transport Authority staff. Unfortunately, we were advised by the NHF that some of the selected hospitals did not have the physical space or personnel to accommodate the equipment. Spanish Town Hospital, however, was already equipped with the space and personnel so a decision was taken to house all three machines at the Spanish Town Hospital instead of delaying the procurement process further. 
After a rigorous selection by the NHF involving the technical team, doctors, and nurses to ensure accurate specifications, access to parts, etc., a supplier was selected and the equipment were procured. Today, we are happy for Mr. Montague's vision because all three machines are now being utilized, an indication of how essential and urgent these equipment are to the saving of lives in our country. Today, the Transport Authority is therefore very proud and happy to be a part of this great initiative. I leave the cost to my managing director to inform you of the cost. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Callum, and uh, we are glad for the much-needed work that has been going on here at the Spanish Town Hospital, so we're also grateful for you, CEO, your staff, and uh, all the commitment that you have placed in improving health care here in Jamaica. All right, so we are proceeding, and uh, I'm going to be inviting at this time Mr. Ainsley Jones, Director of Pharmacy Services at the National Health Fund. He will bring greetings on behalf of Mr. Everton Anderson, the CEO of the National Health Fund. And uh, immediately following Mr. Jones, I will ask Mr. Willard Hilton, the Managing Director of the Transport Authority, to bring his greetings. So we'll proceed in that order. Master of Ceremonies, Ms. Kadisha Watkiss, Senior Public Relations Officer, Minister of Health and Wellness, Honorable Audley Shaw, CD, MP, Minister of Transport and Mining. Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, OD, MP, State Minister, Minister of Health and Wellness. Councillor Renair Benjamin, representing the Mayor of Spanish Town. Mr. Willard Hilton, Managing Director, Transport Authority. Ms. Jacqueline Ellis, CEO, Spanish Town Hospital. Dr. Jacqueline Wright James, Senior Medical Officer, Spanish Town Hospital. Ms. Merdina Cullum, Acting Corporate Communications Manager, Transport Authority. Mr. Gary McKenzie, Assistant Commissioner of Police with responsibility for what I call, I hear is peace step, right? Mr. Alan Blair, President of the National Council of Taxi Association, staff of the Spanish Town Hospital, and special invited guests, members of the media, good morning. Without a doubt, the National Health Fund is here to serve the health sector. Through our institutional benefits program, we have met the needs of many institutions and that of many health facilities within the health regions in Jamaica. Within the last fiscal year, 21-22, 612 million was approved for 10 institutional benefits projects. 66.5 million being allocated to the Sierra region. And I think you want to applaud that. <laughs> Additionally, the NHF has budgeted $100 million for the fiscal year 22-23 for the Southern Regional Health, the SARA region, not Southern, pardon me. This is to support the infrastructure, de infrastructural development across the region. 
This morning, we are here to witness a culmination of a project valued at $12 million that commenced in 2019 upon the initiative of the Transport Authority. They identified a need and reached out to the NHF for support, and we gladly agreed to share in the responsibility of seeing it through. Kudos to the Transport Authority for this initiative. We have previously partnered with the Transport Authority to provide PSA and DRE screening to their male drivers. That collaboration was a success, and this was no different. Through our partnership, the Spanish Town Hospital now has an additional three dialysis machines to serve patients with renal failure who have entrusted their care to this hospital. The availability of vital medical equipment, such as dialysis machines, is key to those who depend on them so they can enjoy a reasonable quality of life. With these machines, more persons will be able to receive treatment and wait time will be positively affected. This is good news, right? So if it's good news, I want you to applaud, please. The NHF is dedicated to strengthening Jamaica's healthcare system, whether through collaboration or as an individual entity. The demands are great in the health sector. Still, the agency will continue to do as much as possible with the funding entrusted to the entity. Once again, the NHF team is happy that the agency has played a significant role in this project that has improved another healthcare facility. Thanks to every person and organization that played a key role in this task. We look forward to the benefits that will come. Thank you. Master of Ceremonies, Ms. Kadisha Watkiss, and Senior Public Relations Officer in the Ministry of Health. My own Minister, Honorable Audley Shaw. Good morning, sir. Minister of State in the Ministry of, of um, Health, Mrs. Juliet Cuthbert Flynn. Good morning. Good morning to Ms. Ruth Ann Crawford, Director of Pharmacy. Pharmacy services, rather, to Miss Jacqueline Ellis, CEO of a Spanish Town Hospital. Good morning, Miss Merdina Callum, our own Merdina Callum Communications Manager at the Transport Authority. Mr. Alan Blair, President of Encota. ACP Gary McKenzie, Head of PSTEB, and the Director at the Transport Authority. All other specially invited guests, members of staff. At the, at the Spanish Town Hospital. I love you so much. You work under such trying circumstances. My heartfelt sympathy goes out to you for all that you continue to do in the face of all that is happening here in Spanish Town. Big up yourselves. Big up yourselves to all of the members of staff and to the hardworking staff at the Transport Authority to who, who makes the Transport Authority the great place that it is for us to work. Good morning. A few years ago, former Minister of Transport and Mining, Robert Montague, um, out of listening to the persons in the sector, made a recommendation to the Transport Authority that we should buy five dial dialysis machines to be placed strategically at five type one hospitals across Jamaica because the sector was asking for help. The sector was crying out, saying that the ability of the people in the sector to access dialysis, dialysis treatment um, efficiently was not there, and therefore we needed to have done something. We decided to partner with the National Health Fund. We didn't buy five machines this time around, but we bought, we partnered and we bought three at a cost of a little over $12 million. Big up the Transport Authority and the National Health Fund for that. 
powerful investment in the country. So we, we partnered and we bought three of them. All three of them are here at the Spanish Stone Hospital. But we are happy that we have made a start. We feel it is a good thing because the signal that we are sending to the country is that when we partner as agencies of the government, we can get more done. The Spanish Stone Hospital don't have to sit and wait on the Ministry of Health to give them the money to buy the dialysis machine. You can find another agency who is willing to partner with you. And that is how we are going to get things moving in Jamaica, by partnering with all of the agencies of government where it is necessary to do so and where we can do so. So we thought it's a good opportunity because we are showing what can happen when we partner. Transport operators in the sector remain one of those vulnerable groupings. Um, they, are, they are likely to develop um, kidney disease because you know the nature of the work that they do. Um, they drive the entire day without emptying their bladder. It's a, it's a survival strategy that they use because they have to survive. But the, the flip side of it is that they put their cells at risk because they're not emptying their bladder. So they're really susceptible to developing kidney disease. And that is why, again, when Minister Montague made the recommendation that we proceed this way, we thought it, was a, it would be a good idea. So under, under, the, under this agreement that we are hoping to sign off on, what we expect is that preferential treatment is going to be given um, by the Spanish known hospital to, to, to members of staff at the Transport Authority, their immediate family, and also to the persons in the sector. That is why we have made investment, because we want to give preferential treatment to the people in the sector. So I hope the people at the Spanish Town Hospital, right, CEO? I hope you understand that that is the main reason we are investing, because our people need help um, in an efficient way. Um, we want to urge the people who will benefit from the donation today to, you know, while it is important for us to attend to your needs, you must also recognize that healthy lifestyle choices is important. And sometimes we, we run ourselves to the ground by not paying attention to the, to the kind of lifestyle that we live. So as you, as you draw on the facility to benefit from what is here, I, I encourage you um, to make sure that we all pay attention to promoting um, healthy lifestyles. So once again, it's a pleasure to be here this morning and to bring you greetings. Um, we are indeed heartened by the support of the National Health Fund and the Ministry of Health and my own ministry, the Ministry of Transport and Mining. And we look forward to perhaps next year contributing some more of these dialysis machines um, further afield in the country so we can cater more to some of the people um, elsewhere. So thank you once again, and we are looking forward to um, the sector benefiting in a real way to what is being afforded here today. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Ainsley Jones and to Mr. Willard Hilton. Seems like we need you over in health, Mr. Hilton. <laughs> with the health promotion messages, but certainly you are indeed on the right track. And if I could just add to what you have said, a sedentary lifestyle too also puts us at risk for complications with chronic kidney disease. So when we sit all day in the offices and we don't have that physical activity, which uh, our, our Minister of State, of course, is a champion for health and fitness, when we have the sedentary lifestyle, we put ourselves at risk for chronic kidney disease. And guess what? We never know which of our family members will need this machine. We'll never know. But I'm so happy that this partnership has made it possible for these three machines to be here. And I think by now, CEO, you are at 13 hemodialysis machines based on the numbers that were handed over earlier so yes yes please put your hands together good things are happening in public health as a result of a partnership so indeed we are thankful all right so i'm going to invite at this time mr keswick simpson he's a member of staff here at the spanish town hospital maintenance supervisor and he will bring us a performance piece Mr. Simpson, are you ready for us? Can we make him welcome?
Good morning, everybody. How can I say thanks for all the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things he hath done with his blood he has saved me and with his power he has raised me oh, to God be all the glory for the things he have done just let me live my life and let it be pleasing lord to thee and should i gain any praise let it go to cal for With his blood, he has saved me, and with his power, he has raised me. Oh, to God be all the glory for the things he hath done. For Wow. I know if we had more time, we would call for an encore, right? <laughs> what a, can we give him a round, a round of applause once more? Wow. Beautiful rendition there, Mr. Simpson. All right. And so we are coming down to the final section of our handover ceremony today. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce at this time uh, two important national figures and i'm so happy to say my minister <laughs> our minister of state in the ministry of health and wellness the honorable juliet cuthbert flint champion for healthcare, champion for health fitness and uh, i'm so happy that she's here to share in this handover ceremony today can we just make her welcome Minister Flynn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Watkins, um, Senior Public Relations Officer and Chairperson for the morning. <laughs> Honorable Audley Shaw, CDMP, Minister of Transport and Mining. Thank you for being here, sir. <laughs> Mr. Ainsley Jones. Director of Pharmacy Services at the National Health Fund. 
uh, Miss Jacqueline Ellis, CEO here at the Spanish Town Hospital. And now, of course, Miss Jacqueline um, Wright James, SMO. Mr. Willard Hilton, pleased to meet you, sir, in person, Managing Director at the Transport Authority. Mr. Gary McKenzie, Assistant Commissioner. Of course, all the distinguished guests, Mr. Counsel Counselor Reynard Benjamin, representing the mayor here at Spanish Town. Distinguished guests, members of staff at the Spanish Town Hospital, other members of the Transport Authority, uh, members of the media, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, it is really a pleasure to be here once again. And, you know, CEO, I've been coming to Spanish Town quite often, you know. And um, I see this beautiful building. You know, I can't wait to come back for that opening of the new building here at the Spanish Town Hospital. And I'm really happy to share in this morning's handover of these dialysis machine. We know that quite a number of Jamaicans, over 150,000 Jamaicans, um, suffer from um, renal um, issues and have to be on dialysis. We also um, know that quite a number of Jamaicans can't afford um, in the private sector to afford the treatment that is necessary and many of them, we see the demise of many Jamaicans who can't afford. So whenever we get partnerships like this um, and we're able to um, get some dialysis machines to serve the public, we are very happy for that. And so yet again, the collaborative effort that we're seeing here of the partner organizations have led to a generous gift that will support the Ministry of Health, well health and wellness mandate um, to improve and advance the quality of health care right across Jamaica. And I heard, as you said, you're not done. Um, <laughs> you'll be, you were supposed to have five, we have three, so we're going to be looking for the other two. <laughs> um, chronic kidney disease, as I said, which en encompasses all degrees of reduced renal function, is among the lifestyle illnesses with a high prevalence rate in Jamaica. And this afternoon, we're going to be at the park, in uh, the Emancipation Park, speaking about the importance of exercise. Um, and just basically, they're going to be doing quite a number of things out there this afternoon. So anyone listening today, this morning, we're going to ask you to come out. They're going to be testing um, for all sorts of things. Um, a few weeks ago, we had it in... Um, Ocho Rios, the Jamaica moves, and I went ahead and made sure that I test um, for my cholesterol, checked my cholesterol, because it was kind of going in the wrong direction, so I wanted to make sure that I was moving, the knees were moving in the right direction. So we want to make sure that Jamaicans are healthy. This condition, as you know, uh, may know, eventually lead to kidney failure and least patient requiring lifetime treatment through hemodialysis. Inadequate number of dialysis machines have impacted the public health system, um, system ability to respond effectively to the need and of renal care. We note that the need is great, as I mentioned. Given its association with diabetes and hypertension, chronic kidney disease is a serious public health matter for which more resources are needed. Spanish Town Hospital, as we know, is a type B facility in the island um, and is home to the Katie Who Hemodialysis Unit, which operates six days a week um, in order to meet the mandate of hemodialysis, hemodialysis service um, in Jamaica's fastest growing parish. In fact, for renal care here, the facility's wait list, which dates back to 2018, is comprised of some 291 um, patients who are currently waiting here um, for the space of the hemodialysis service. And so on average between August 2021 and 2022, the unit was able to conduct over 4,000 dialysis sessions. 325 emergency dialysis sessions were carried out in the period and 138 
emergency patients. And I was speaking with the CEO who was telling us that you're going to be putting away at least one of this dialysis machine to make, um, you know, for a service for persons who are coming to the Spanish Town Hospital for emergency service. And that is almost daily that we have persons who need that type of a care. And so this partnership, um, I want to express thanks to the National Health Fund and the Transport Authority, which together have equaled the financing of $12.9 million for the cost of three dialysis machines, which are now installed and ready for use. Today's gift will strengthen the public health system ability to offer life-saving dialysis treatment. And so this donation especially Welcome at Spanish Town Hospital is on the cusp of major rehabilitative work, as I've said, in order to for the facility to better serve the people of St. Catherine and its environs. I must say that I'm deeply touched by the exemplary show of partnership which blossomed back in October of 2019 when the Transport Authority reached out to the NHF to support um, for improved access to dialysis treatment for its staff members of the public transport sector. It therefore means that colleagues and families alike can look towards seeing their team members, as you mentioned, and loved ones receive treatment here. The act of solidarity is a true demonstration of the importance of partnership in public health. And so in closing, on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I use this opportunity to underscore sincere appreciation for this type of partnership that we have seen during the COVID-19 and we're seeing it continue now. Indeed, we all have an opportunity to make a difference. And so together, our efforts can improve the lives of others. Your work through this handover is a symbol of hope to many and a tremendous investment in our country's overall health outcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister Flynn. And as she mentioned, we are inviting you all to hop on over to Emancipation Park later today. We're going to be launching Caribbean Moves. You know about Jamaica Moves. Now we're taking it to the Caribbean. And so some people will have to use this machine, but not all because it's a preventable, um, it's a preventable disease. So if you can get moving, then you will prevent yourself from developing and being vulnerable to the risk factor for chronic kidney disease. Once again, thank you, Minister Cuthbert Flynn. All right, so we are down to the wire, and I'm so happy to welcome at this time, not my minister, <laughs> but one of our beloved public servants, and he is none other than the Honorable Audley Shaw, Minister of Transport and Mining. I know af uh, affectionately what we call him, Manayad. <laughs> and so it gives me great pleasure to welcome him at this time, Minister Audley Shaw. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much to our chairperson. <clears throat> Let me recognize my colleague minister and of course the head of the transport authority, Mr. <clears throat> Jones. And of course, the CEO of the Spanish Town Hospital and all of the members of this hospital, our Assistant Commissioner of Police, second day in a row now I get to book him up. And uh, distinguished guests, 
ladies and gentlemen. You know, I before I go to my script, and I better hurry up and go to it before I get in trouble, you know what I mean? But before I go to my script, and uh, I don't want you, anybody, we have to keep this one secret, okay? <laughs> I came in and I was giving a nice little greeting to the nurses on the right hand side. And everybody wondering how I'm greeting the nurses like that. I have a little secret to tell you. My first and third wives are nurses. <laughs> So, so I'm a weakness for the earth. <laughs> and then the next secret I will tell you is that this hospital, 70 years old, as long as the Queen of England was in rain. And guess what? On the 13th of June, 1952, Manayad was born. <laughs> okay, straight to the script now. <laughs> but this is indeed a proud moment for me as minister, as we, through the Transport Authority and the National Health Fund, hand over these brand new dialysis machines to this Spanish town hospital. And it's important that we establish that it was an initiative proposed by the former Minister of Transport and Mining, uh, Mr. Robert Montague, my good friend. Today's donation shows that the Transport Authority is not only in the business of regulating our public transport sector, but has a vested interest in our transport operator's well-being. This donation complements the 10 refurbished machines received by this hospital a few days ago. Chronic kidney, kidney disease is not as well known as other medical conditions. Yet end-stage renal disease has a profound impact on the lives of many patients and their families. With the help of these machines, this hospital will be able to serve patients who suffer from kidney failure, allowing them to carry on active lives. Operators in the public transport sector are particularly prone, as we were told, to illnesses such as these and other commodities as they spend much of their days seated behind the wheel driving from one place to another. It would be preferred that not one of our operators would have use for these machines, but this is the reality. I therefore remind our public transport operators to take care of themselves so they can continue to take care of their families and communities. Get your regular checkups, eat right, exercise, take your meds when needed. You only get one body to last you a lifetime. And when you stop, say at the transport center or somewhere, get out and walk around while the people are coming off and going on. I commend the Transport Authority and the National Health Fund for their partnership in making this almost $13 million undertaking a reality. We all have our limitations, but humanitarianism does not have boundaries. Each person has a right to basic health services and should be equally guaranteed as a developing country, we fully understand the challenges and difficulties faced by the average Jamaican in accessing certain health services. It's our hope 
that this step in the right direction will propel other public and private organizations to follow similar paths. Let me just take this opportunity to briefly address the most recent strike action by some transport operators in the St. Andrew West area. We hear your concerns. In fact, I met with a group yesterday along with ACP McKenzie. And we are working on all fronts to ensure that issues are addressed as best as possible. We have met with the police, the transport authority, operators and associations, and have given a commitment to having the necessary dialogue with the responsible parties to have certain matters addressed. However, transport operators must play their part in maintaining order and discipline by adhering to the rules of the road and respecting the responsible authorities. This is a partnership that can only work once all parties take responsibility for their roles and actions. But sometimes, sometimes we in authority make errors too. And we must be honest enough to admit to those errors. One of them I pointed out to ACP McKenzie yesterday came to my attention that an area down Constant Spring Road from about the Immaculate School going down, before the road was fixed, there were either three or four bus stops. The road was then fixed and the bus stops were removed. And now when the buses are stopping, they're getting in trouble with the police. So I've had to make the commitment that we need to put back the bus stops so that buses coming from Stone Hill, other areas like them, some of them have students for the schools. And they need to stop and let them off. So we need to put back the bus stops in place. It it's can't be that that the problems are always with our drivers and our conductors. Where the problems are the government, we must do something about it. And I'm making that commitment. So as I end, my commendations go out to the Transport Authority inspectors who are also seen assisting students to get to school. Actions such as these and the handing over of these units exemplifies the thoughtful and committed approach the government of Jamaica takes in caring for its people. So I express profound gratitude to the Transport Authority, the National Health Fund, and all the stakeholders who made this possible. To the staff at the Spanish Town Hospital, especially the nurses, Thank you for your dedicated service and commitment to patient care. May God bless you all richly. Thank you again, Minister Shaw. And certainly we are grateful for the partnership between the National Health Fund, your partner for a healthy you, and the Transport Authority, which have made possible the installation of these three dialysis machines worth $12.9 million. All right, we're going to have the vote of thanks, but I'm also going to ask immediately following that Ministers Shaw and Flynn take the platform to unveil the dialysis machine. And then I'm going to ask for CEO, SMO, Mr. Hilton and Mr. Jones to join them for a photo opportunity. So the vote of thanks by Mr. 
Alan Blair from the National Council of Taxi Associations, and then we'll move into the photo opportunity. It's been my delight sharing with you in today's handover ceremony, and we want to see you at Emancipation Park later on. All right, so join us for the launch of Caribbean Moves. I'm Kadisha Watkins, Senior Public Relations Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It's been my pleasure chairing this function. Chairperson, Ms. Kadisha Watkiss, Senior Public Relations Officer of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Honorable Audley Shaw, CD, MP, Minister of Transport and Mining, Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, OD MP, State Minister in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Mr. Gary McKenzie, Acting Commissioner of Police, CEO of the Spanish Town Hospital, other, Mr. Willard Hilton, Managing Director of the Transport Authority. Other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. When you rise in the morning, give thanks for the light. For your life, for your strength, give thanks for your food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason to give thanks, the fault lies in yourself. Gratitude is a sign of noble souls. Ladies and gentlemen, the pleasure is mine to move the vote of thanks on behalf of the public passenger operators in the public transportation sector. This initiative is a very generous and thoughtful one, which we are confident will go a far way in assisting persons in our fraternity who in years gone by could only dream of accessing the service. It is with humility and gratitude that I want to say thank you to the following persons. Again, to our chairperson, Ms. Watkiss. Thank you for the way, the able way in which you have piloted us this morning and took us on the journey through this pro program. Indeed, you have done a good job, and we thank you. Thanks to Ms. Ruth Ann Crawford, Director of Pharmacy Service Acting, the NHF, for your inspirational prayer, thanking God for his blessings and for the blessing of the machines that he has allowed our partners to provide for us. Ms. Jacqueline Ellis, CEO of the Spanish Town Hospital, who gave us such a warm welcome. Indeed, we felt very welcomed after she was through. Thanks to Ms. Merdina Collum, Corporate Communications Manager acting of the Transport Authority, who gave us the project overview. We thank her for helping us to understand how the initiative came about or came on stream. And hence, today we are here 
unveiling. I must join her in also giving thanks to our previous minister, the Honorable Robert Montague, who conceived the idea, who had the passion for our taxi operators, and born out of that um, desire for, to help us, today we are here, and we want to give him thanks for the part he had played. By way of greetings, we had two greetings. Mr. Jones, who represented Mr. Everton Anderson, from the National Health Fund. We want to say thanks to the National Health. Thank you for your presentation, sir. And for the partnership coming on board from the National Health Fund and spending these millions of dollars, we really want to say thank you to the Health Fund. We really appreciate it. And I speak on behalf of my colleagues out there. Today is a special day, and we really appreciate the millions of dollars that you have put into this initiative so that we have a chance or the privilege of having dialysis if we, we need them. Mr. Willard Hilton. Thank you, sir, for also for your presentation and for encouraging us to take care of our, ourselves. Thanks for your contribution to the PPV sector and for encouraging us to practice healthy lifestyle. You also stress that members of the PPV sector should, should, serve, should serve well in the sector. I want to twin together, though, the collaboration of the National Health Fund and the Transport Authority. The Transport Authority has also contributed significantly, along with the Health Fund, in making this initiative a reality today. I just ask you to put your hands together for both the Transport Authority and the National Health Fund. To Mr. Keswick Simpson, what a man can sing. And he did it a cappella style. And we didn't miss the music. Thank you, sir, for your inspirational singing, reminding us to give God thanks for what he has done today. Indeed, to God be the glory. Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, ODM M MP, State Minister in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful information and update that you have given to us today. I wasn't aware that over 150,000 Jamaicans, Jamaicans were on dialysis. And you also mentioned that there is a list of persons Awaiting, waiting to come on dialysis. I'm hoping and trusting that these machines today will alleviate or bring down that number so that our members and the, the general public can access the, the services. Thank you for encouraging us to Exercise. I heard you mention of a, 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 a exercise meeting, color meeting this evening. I want to take this opportunity to say to my taxi operators out there and bus drivers, come on over to Emancipation Park this afternoon. Get out your 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 sweatsuits and your shorts or whatever and your your boots, and come as you are. Even jump out of the taxi and run down. Spend a 15 or 30 minutes and get back to work. I want to en encourage you 
and also the wider transportation sector that we should exercise and take care of ourselves so that we won't have the need for the, the machines. To our Honorable Minister Audley Shaw, CDMP. Thank you, sir, for encourage us, encouraging us to take care of our health and our families. Because I'm sure when we take care of our health, health, we will be able to take care of our families. I, I join you, sir, in encouraging our members to comply with the rules and regulations of the Road Traffic Act. I am aware that we have some indiscipline out there. However, it is our, we are always desirous of having our, our members complying with the rules. I can say, while there are some rogue operators out there, we have decent law-abiding taxi operators who obey the rules of the road. And I want to encourage them to continue and to ask my fellow members who are not yet obeying the rules that they are to shape up, put themselves in order. Because when I see the demonstration of members having a lot of tickets and are calling for an amnesty, you know, it, it, it says that the indiscipline is really rife. But I want to ask our members, it can be avoided. You don't have to get these tickets if you only obey the rules, the laws, and the regulations of the Road Traffic Act. I want to say thanks to the media houses that are here. Thank you, sirs, for bringing us to the public on social media and on the mainstream media. We want to say thank you. Thanks to the hospital for hosting us. And if I had left out anybody, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming here and for participating and for sharing. And may God bless you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. All right, so we're going to shift the podium a bit and take the machine center stage. Yes, and then we invite you ministers to unveil. <laughs>